PC Perspective's coverage of the 2012 Consumer Electronics Show is brought to you by MSI. Hey guys, I'm here with JJ from ASUS. He's going to go over a couple of new motherboards for us. Uh, I guess these are uh, Sandy Bridge E boards, right? That's correct. X79 boards. Okay, so w what's new? What's What are you guys showing here that's new that's maybe not out on the market already? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've actually got two brand new boards. Everything right here on the left-hand side of the board has already been released since the actual formal launch of Sandy Bridge E. But we're actually introducing two brand new boards uh, with the Rampage 4 formula and the Rampage 4 gene. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and pull out the formula board here, and we're going to take a look at actually one of the unique characteristics. So one of the reasons why we took actually a little bit longer to release this board is that we came up with an entirely new audio design. So it's referred to as actual emote trace design, and you can actually see that by the actual kind of line that goes around the actual audio componentry. So going back from the back I.O. and your actual analog audio outputs, then going all the way back to the actual primary cap for the PHY codec and then your soothing caps. Okay. Now what this fundamentally does is actually is that this portion is on its own separate PCB layer. So if some of our users that are kind of diehard ROG guys remember our Supreme FX module used to be kind of a... Uh, it was a plug-in, like almost like a PCI Express. Exactly. It was a standalone kind of sound card that you would plug into the PCI Express slot. This is the same type of concept, but this allows us to maintain more flexibility at actually keeping the full four-way expansion ability of the formula board, but while improving the audio. So the great part about why we did this kind of design is, is that one, of course, with this type of board, you're going to maybe be looking to overclock clocking and look into multiple GPUs. When you do a lot of that, you can add over and a lot of interference into this audio subsection area. So this helps to keep all that independent, give you a lower noise floor, and also be able to allow you to drive higher capacitance to the actual codec, giving you better sound. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty cherry choice. And the other cool thing is this lights up. Nice. So we like we like bling. Yeah, I definitely. I think we all like bling. So <laughs> you guys will actually be able to check that out once uh, we look at the chassis that has it set up in. Okay. Okay. And then you also have uh, the Rampage 4 Gene, That's which is the Gene is a return of the micro ATX That's correct. form factor. That's right. With Gene, pretty much our focus is always to make the pretty much the most badass micro ATX motherboard that's out on the market. We pretty much go no compromise, so we keep um, all the full high-end digital VRM components. So we have the Nichicon GT caps, the Nextec power blocks for the VRM, all the really good stuff that we would want here in terms of overclocking focus. You still, of course, get the SLI support on the board. You still get a lot of rich expansion connectivity. We still even give you the advanced audio mode design. So you're pretty much not compromising on anything except for a couple of PCIe slots. But for most users, I mean, you're still not even restricted from running, you know, uh, the Crossfire or SLI configuration. So pretty much everything you could want in a micro ATX form factor short of maybe a little bit more PCIe and of course the restriction on the DIMM because of the size of the board. Do these boards share the, the same kind of overclocking features that the Extreme has as Definitely. well? Yes, 100%. We've actually taken the core UEFI that was written for the Rampage 4 Extreme, and the same UEFI options that are present there are actually present in the gene. So a lot of the advanced options and even some of the specialized software we're going to show you later um, is uh, exclusively available for the entire G line, including this board. Great. Thanks. JJ with the SUS again here with me, and uh, we're going to look at this pretty badass looking motherboard. It's, this is two LGA 2011 sockets, is that right? That's correct. Um, this will be an upcoming chipset that will be coming out from Intel very soon. This is going to really be focused up for the guys that want the best of the best. I mean, you could definitely treat this as a platform for the ultimate gamer because you do actually have support for PCI Gen 3, for four-way configurations, um, but this is also going to be very friendly towards, of course, content professionals, people that do high-end audio, video, compute-based computing. As you can see, actually, in our configuration here, we actually have Tesla cards, and then we have one primary GTX 560. Um, but you're going to be able to have the support for dual Xeons in terms of the board. Uh, you've got 14 SATA ports on this guy, so you have an insane amount of IO connectivity, dual Intel gigabit LAN on there with teaming support. So this is pretty much taking it to the edge in terms of what you can right now do in the desktop platform. Very cool.